Now the festival season may be drawing to a close for 2016, but many people are already planning ahead for next year. Did you know though that today's festival scene can trace its roots all the way back to the original Isle of Wight festival in the 60s? Well, our reporter Jason Rushworth went along to an exhibition to find out more. From now, you won't have to wait until 2017 to experience the Isle of Wight Festival. Running at the Portsmouth Guild Hall is an exhibition of the first three years of the world-famous event, highlighting its origins in 1968. It forms part of the Portsmouth Music Experience Gallery. Its curator, Nigel Grundy, was himself a young rock fan who was there in 1968, and he remembers seeing many of the acts who performed. Crazy well of Arthur Brown. Arthur Brown couldn't get his fire helmet lit because of the conditions. Um, Jeff's an airplane came on. They played well. Um, they had a very large road crew with them. Um, they were the only uh, non-English band that played there. And um, Fairport Convention ended up, in the, ended up finishing up in the morning. And um, Ian Matthews, who was their, one of their singers at the time, who was saying with his eyes closed, said he remembers starting to sing um, and when he opened his eyes, the sun was up and uh, they were the last band. The festival is also remembered for relaunching the career of the recently announced Nobel Peace Prize laureate Bob Dylan. Nigel recalls how they did that. They contacted his manager, offered him $50,000, which is £20,000 in those days, a lot more now. Waited for a couple of days, um, manager got back to him and said he's possibly interested. So Ray Fook uh, put together a, a document with photographs of the Isle of Wight, descriptions, made a little film, a um, little sort of eight millimetre home movie for him. They organised a farmhouse for him to stay in and almost made it like a little uh, holiday for him and his family. Sent it to him and uh, waited a couple of nail biting days and then his manager telegrammed back and said, Dylan's going to accept, we can do it. And that was how it all started. And then, of course, they had to try and find some money to pay. <laughs> Chief Executive of Portsmouth Cultural Trust, Andy Grays, believes the Isle of Wight Festival really was the daddy of them all. And without it, today's festival scene may never have come about. I think the truth is that the original Isle of Wight Festival, from what I understand, and uh, uh, my colleague uh, Nigel and others would, say, would have known an awful lot more about it than I do, uh, it was, it, it, would, it broke new ground uh, and uh, I was talking to a number of people at a, a music uh, event this week who run festivals and you know as great as today's festivals are there are hundreds of them uh, in those days there, it, there was next to nothing uh, and I think the Isle of Wight Festival broke new ground uh, it uh, spurred arguably Glastonbury um, the very first festival I ever went to was Reading in the early 80s and, and then there were only maybe three or four big festivals in the UK so I think um, what we have here is, is a bit of history, of not just about the artists, but also the, the, the context of live music. You know, and you've got to remember there was no internet, Top of the Pops was in its infancy, so people were coming along paying relatively cheap, uh, or cheaper ticket prices than today, and, and getting to see their favourite artists. And, um, you know, it was, it was incredibly popular. And finally, who's this girl? Is it you or someone you may know from back in 1968? The photograph and the image has inspired songs the world over. The Guildhall would like to identify once and for all who she really was. I'm Jason Rushworth for That Solent.